We all know that cats meow and dogs bark, but do you know what penguins sound like? Vocalization is important to penguin survival. They rely on their calls to find mates and raise chicks. Penguins are an indicator species. This means we can understand how the ecology of Antarctica is changing by just looking at penguins. Climate change has a significant effect on penguins on the Antarctic Peninsula, one of the fastest warming areas in the world. This warming is causing sea ice to melt and change course. Penguins have been forced to travel farther to forage for Antarctic krill, their main food source, which live under the sea ice. Gen 2 penguins, in particular, have expanded their range farther south as the climate warms. For the past two years, I focused on a question worth answering, which is, does Gen 2 vocal communication vary across their geographic range? In other words, do all penguins speak the same language regardless of where they live? First, let me tell you a bit about myself. I became interested in science research quite unexpectedly. Growing up, I was a devoted ballet student. Here I am in the seventh grade. Back then, I found myself wondering whether a ballet technique, spotting, helps dancers in their turns. I researched the ballet topic and turned it into a science fair project. Surprisingly, I won first place in the Kansas City Science Fair. The freedom of investigating my own questions turned me into a self-learner, and the challenge of pursuing unknown answers got me hooked on science. Since then, I've researched a new topic every year. During my sophomore year, I visited the Kansas City Zoo's new penguin exhibit. There, I heard about two penguin parents who were unable to care for their chick. It was suspected that the parents were having difficulty communicating with each other. I was intrigued. How could two penguins of the same species be unable to understand one another? I tried reading up on the subject, but found very little. Apparently, while many people study songbirds, the vocalizations of non-songbird species, such as penguins, go unsung. I became captivated by the connection between Gen 2 penguins expanding habitat in Antarctica and their vocalizations. I wondered whether understanding climate change could start with a single bird. Essentially, my guiding question was, do Gen 2 penguins develop different dialects? Because this topic is so understudied by the scientific community, this was the first research into understanding Gen 2 communication and how colony formation affects their vocals. Now all I needed was to record some penguins. No, I didn't get to go to Antarctica. I headed back to the Kansas City Zoo, where I got in contact with an Antarctic scientist, Maureen Lynch, who later became my mentor. Maureen agreed to collect and send to me raw field recordings of penguin calls from her upcoming trip to Antarctica. These recordings were collected passively by leaving a microphone in the middle of a colony of penguins and recording their natural calls. Maureen sent me these raw field recordings from nine colonies, as pictured. These colonies span a distance of 260 miles on the Antarctic Peninsula. I separated them into three different regions based on geographic location. And now that I had the recordings from across Antarctica in my possession, I found that the field recordings sounded a bit hectic. <laughs> This is what penguin colonies sound like. All the penguins calling at once. It seems impossible to distinguish a single call. It's like trying to pick out a single voice in any high school lunchroom. I needed the clips to be of single calls so I could easily compare them. And when you single in on one penguin's call, the vocalization sounds very unique. <laughs>
music to your ears, right? Now it was just a matter of comparing different clips like these. At first, I thought it would be as simple as telling the difference between someone from London and New York. However, the differences be between these calls are so minute that they aren't detectable by ear. So instead, I looked at the spectrogram or picture of these calls. This is what a penguin call like the one you just heard looks like. In order to find the amount of difference between the calls, I analyze each syllable or section of these spectrograms for three variables, loudness, frequency, and duration. I recognize I had over 450 pieces of data to analyze. For this amount of data, I needed a customized computer program to ensure that the data I collected were reliable and statistically valid. And since there's no app for that, I set out to write my own program. The only problem was that I didn't know a single thing about coding. I decided to take an online course on how to write code in a statistical analysis software. A month later, I used my new program to compare calls between colonies and between regions in order to determine if call characteristics were different depending on location. I found that regions farther apart have more difference in their calls than those closer together. Finally, my big question was answered. Essentially, I discovered that penguins in the three different regions have different dialects depending on where they live. After completing this research, I wanted to learn more about my penguin friends. This summer, I was accepted as an intern at Stony Brook University, allowing me to work in a lab with my Antarctic mentor. I was able to expand the scope of my research to include a more controlled setting, zoo populations. Comparing the vocals at New York's Central Park Zoo, Detroit Zoo, and Kansas City Zoo, I did more advanced analyses this time taking around 20 measurements for each call. And again, I found evidence of dialects between different populations. This boosted my confidence as it supported my Antarctic research results. I found that regions farther apart had more difference in their calls than those closer together. Before doing this research, I was never able to wrap my head around climate change. It always seemed too big to grasp and impossible to solve. Penguins from different regions may not be able to easily communicate with one another, which may impede their ability to raise young, as was suspected in the Kansas City Zoo. I found that Gen 2 penguins have much more complex vocals than was previously believed. These complex vocals and structures could be affected as Gen 2 penguins expand their range. Survival of Gen 2s in the wild depend on their parents' ability to communicate. If climate change causes sea ice to change course and penguins to move around to search for food, their population size could be impacted. With Gen 2 penguins being in the middle of the food chain, this could cause a disruption of the entire Antarctic ecosystem, and it signifies how climate change affects our whole world. Many people think we know everything about our world's animals. However, in cases of animals that are hard to reach and study, like penguins in Antarctica, we know very little about their biology, behavior, and ecology. When we have holes in our understanding of these things, we can make poor conservation decisions. That's why it's important to take a big problem like climate change and break it down into pieces. If each researcher just took one piece of the puzzle, we could truly make progress in conservation and stop or reverse climate change, allowing these unseen and unheard impacts to have a voice and become known. If climate change can affect penguins' habitats, imagine what other impacts it has that we won't hear until it's too late. Now, I know climate change is a serious topic, but when you're working with penguins, there's always something to smile about. So now, so that you can all say you know how to speak penguin, let's learn how to make penguin calls together. First, let's listen to that clip from earlier. 
Now everyone, take a break from sitting. Assume the penguin stance. Flap your flippers. Point your beak in the air and follow my lead. Great job. <laughs> Thank you.